really excited. I'm really excited to teach you guys modern art this year. It is probably the most important movement in or the most important time period in art history when you're talking about it to people today in our real world. And it all starts with Impressionism. So modern art is this big chunk of time that takes place from the late 1800s until the late 1900s. Uh, the hundred years between 1870 and 1970 to be exact. After 1970 up to now, we're in a time period called postmodernism, which I won't be talking about as much. We're going to talk mostly this year about this chunk of time. Today, we're going to focus on the movement that started the ball rolling with modernism, and that is Impressionism. Now, before this time, everybody in the art world was obsessed with realism. They wanted things to be as realistic as possible, and that could mean realistic figures in stories, uh, it could mean realistic political figures, and then eventually they got to the point of realism where they said, no, real life isn't politicians, real life isn't these amazing celebrities and rich people. Realism is the majority of us who are out in the field, who are working, maybe even slaves, and the weather might not be good and people aren't looking at the artist. It's That's what's real. So realism became this art. It's very dull. It's very drab. I don't love it. I find it a little boring. But that's what was popular at the time. Up until one specific person, whose name was Claude Monet, changed the game forever. So <coughs> Claude Monet agreed with me, and he thought that this was a little boring. And more than that, he said, I want to capture in art a moment. I don't want to see an entire, you know, I don't want to represent hours. I want to represent one fleeting moment of light and change. And so he created his first Impressionist piece called Impression Sunrise. You can actually see his name down here, Claude Monet, in 1872. Now he made this piece to represent the sunrise coming over the water and how the world was dark and gray and then just splashes of orange in the sky and in the water and um, these boats and the reflection. He did it very quickly because a sunrise doesn't last forever. Think about if you were trying to draw a sunrise. The sun moves kind of slowly, but most artists stay in one place and work on one painting for five to 20 or more hours. A sunrise doesn't last that long. It lasts maybe half an hour. And so Claude Monet had to create an entire painting in the amount of time the sun hung at this point in the sky. So he worked quickly, moving his brush very quickly, um, getting co using colors that people didn't usually connect with the sky, this muddy brown, gray, uh, not gray, orangish color isn't normally connected with the sky. And he made a piece that showed an impression of that exact moment. Now he called it Impression Sunrise because he acknowledged this isn't actually what the world looked like, but it was his impression of what it looked like. Now, everybody hated it. They thought that it looked like trash, that it looked like a scribble, and that Claude Monet was a jerk for trying to call this art and to hang it up in a gallery. And so they actually, um, that's where the name Impressionism comes from. It all comes from this one painting. The term was originally derogatory. Derogatory means that it's a word that is meant as an insult. It's a word that you say it and it's supposed to make someone feel bad. Um, so this in word impressionism was originally derogatory. The critics and the audience felt the work was an unfinished impression. But Claude Monet didn't care. He kept going. So 
This is one of his most famous paintings. This is called The Japanese Bridge, Water Lilies Pond, and it is actually a painting of his own garden. He had a luscious garden that he loved to visit and paint, and it still exists in a place in France called Giverny. Uh, Giverny is uh, easily accessible from Paris. People like to travel there to see Claude Monet's gardens. And what's interesting about this is, again, while it's more realistic than his first painting, it is not realistic. He made it look, the brush strokes were short and small, and the colors that he chose are what he saw. He saw blue shadows. He saw blue in the plants, not because the plants themselves were blue, but because that's what the light did. He saw in the water, not blue, but the green reflections from the trees around him. He was painting what he saw. By the way, this is his garden in real life. This is what it looks like if you visit this exact same spot in Giverny today. So he kept going with this. Claude was obsessed with painting light. Once he got going, he kept going. He did not care that the audience thought that the work was ugly and unfinished. He just wanted to try. So one of the things that he would do was paint the same objects at different times of day, at different times of year, at different locations. These are haystacks. Um, not the most interesting of subjects, but something that he could stare at for hours. So think about what season this looks like. To me, this season looks like an early spring morning. This looks like a winter evening, that afternoon moment where the sun just starts to set. This to me looks like fall, again in the afternoon with the sun setting and this um, haystack is so dark because the sun is behind it. This one looks like it's the middle of summer, maybe morning because we can tell from the dramatic shadow that the sun's not directly overhead, but definitely not early morning. Now, he also would paint some other things. This one, San Giorgio Maggiore at dusk. I think this is just beautiful. It looks very rainbowy to me. And you can really see the brush strokes. So let's talk about those brush strokes. You can see exactly where his brush went. And the realist painters did not like that. They wanted, going back here, a painting to look very real. So there's a couple of reasons why Claude didn't care. Of course he's trying to paint as fast as possible, but some technology came out in the late 1800s that would put paintings like this one to shame. Think about it for a moment. What technology came out in the late 1800s, early 1900s, that, that made paintings like this unimportant? Hopefully you were thinking of a camera. The camera um, allows you to take an exact picture, and so you no longer need a painter to do an exact job, which is part of why Claude Monet and other impressionists were saying, we don't have to do that boring thing. I can make paintings like this. They used their brush strokes really quickly because they didn't care if they blended naturally. It was stylistic, but more than that, it allowed them to paint as fast as possible. Now, Claude was obsessed with painting, as you may have heard. This is his wife, woman with a parasol, Madame Monet and her son. This is his wife and their son, and um, they're very important to Claude Monet, but do you think that people really knew who Madame Monet was besides that? Remember, in the movement of, of realism and the movements before that, you were just supposed to paint important things. So Impressionism was disliked not just because people thought it was ugly, but also because it didn't feature important people. There's an art movement called Neoclassical, which we're not talking about this year, but it, um, it focused on painting really important people like Napoleon and George Washington. Madame Monet, not exactly as important as them. That's one of the other reasons people didn't like Impressionism. So, so far we've said they didn't like it because it looked unfinished, because it looked unrealistic, and because it didn't feature important people. 
Now, I want to go back to talking about Claude for a minute. Claude was, as I said, obsessed with painting. A little too obsessed with painting, actually. Madame Monet eventually got very sick and died. And while she was dying in the hospital, Claude saw her dying face and he said, didn't, he, did, he didn't sit and think, oh, this is so sad, my wife is dying. Instead, he thought, oh, this would make a great painting. And he painted her while she lay dying in the hospital. Now, there are other Impressionists, lots of them, in fact, and one of them um, is named Mary Cassatt. She is actually the most famous American Impressionist, but she lived in France. Now, she is considered the greatest American Impressionist, but she couldn't actually work in America because back in 1894, she wasn't allowed to be in the same room as a man unless she was married to him. Now, that doesn't work very well if you're a painter and um, in fact, in America, people wouldn't give her jobs. They wouldn't pay her for her work. So she moved to France, where there was a little bit more freedom to be a painter. However, some of the rules still existed in France, such as that she was not allowed to be in the same room as a man she wasn't married to. And so most of her paintings include women and children. So this is um, a woman and her teenage daughter looking at these ducks in the water and I want you to notice the colors of the water they're not just a simple blue with white highlights she made colors that reflected the light and what she saw this is another example of Mary's work um, this is a mother and a child mère et enfant and something that I want to bring up with this piece is that peop just reminding you how much people hated Impressionism. You can see that the woman's face is a little blurry, right? And that the world behind her is a little blurry. Well, there was actually real uh, recommendations from doctors for pregnant women to avoid looking at Impressionist paintings, lest the baby be exposed to filth. They thought that if a baby um, inside a pregnant woman's womb uh, was around a painting and exposed to it, when the baby was born, that baby could go crazy because the baby would think that this is how the world is actually supposed to look. That's how deep people in the 1900s hated Impressionism. Now, Impressionism was hated back then, but not by every single person. Of course, there were artists like Claude Monet, and like Mary Cassatt and other Impressionists who did their work, but they also impacted the world. They introduced, they established the right to experiment with personal style. Remember how I said that Impressionism started all of modern art? It, well, it Im uh, created so much of an impression on the world that every type of art afterwards was impacted by this idea that you don't have to follow the rule book. You can be creative. You can use the colors you want. We have people who will travel across the world to see Impressionist paintings in museums now. This is water lilies in a museum. It's giant. I have other pictures that I can show you someday of uh, they had to construct special rooms to show water lilies because it's so big and so popular. It impacted artists like Vincent van Gogh to make the post-Impressionist movement. That impacted people um, to make the Baroque movement and to make the modern Impressionism movement or, po excuse me, the contemporary pro uh, Impressionist movement, uh, Fauvism, all of these styles these ideas that you can be unique with your art started because of Impressionism. I want to show you this timeline that you didn't get to see of the work, the time periods, the art that came before. You'll notice the Renaissance, Baroque, they all kind of took turns. Nobody really overlapped until Impressionism told people it's okay to play with your art. And then suddenly we have lots of ideas happening at the exact same time. So today you're going to be writing an essay about Impressionism's influence on audience. 
Remember that some people hated it and some people loved it. Think about the different reasons they hated it. I'm going to want to hear multiple. There will be more information later on. Good luck.